Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining and welcome back to Wall Street Silver. Our guest today is the legend himself, my good friend, Willem Middlecope, author of The Big Reset and founder of Commodity Discovery Fund. Welcome back, Willem. Well, great to be back. It has been a while and uh, we are just uh, talking off camera that this might finally be it. <laughs> yeah, you know, we've been watching the silver market very closely for many, many years. I know you yourself, yeah, before camera talking, you've been buying silver for 20, 25 years. <laughs> yeah. So now, yeah. Is, you know, silver is moving up quite a bit in the, in the past. I, little... I can wait a few more weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, everyone and even Wall Street, silver and online that we're watching precious metals closely, silver and gold. But I wanted to bring you on to talk about silver and the moves that it's making. What are you seeing right now, Willem? And what's the uh, what's so exciting about silver right well, now? Well, we, we all know uh, precious metals, especially gold and silver, are uh, manipulated, uh, or you could say managed. <laughs> uh, you know, depends what side of the spectrum you are. Um, but but we've of course we've seen a huge run for silver in 1980 when they tried to corner the market, and that showed how small this market is, how easy you could turn uh, corner this market. Uh, there were the Hunt brothers, and then then they changed the game overnight at the Comex, and then the Hunt brothers were uh, scared away. Uh, we've seen Warren Buffett invest in gold in the 1990s, but I think they told Warren, stay out of that market. He never <laughs> touched silver again. Then we saw a huge jump in uh, around to 2010, 2011. I really enjoyed that move towards uh, $50. I played it with futures. Wow. Uh, and, and that made me quite a bit of money. And then we saw another huge phase of manipulation and they brought it all back to $10. And um I think the physical demand out there is just incredible. I just saw some uh, stats, some graphs of Indian imports, silver imports, Turkish uh, silver imports. I can send them to you. And uh, that's a real strong demand. And and don't forget that uh, the, the dollar has been weaponized, but yeah. the gold and silver are uh, being weaponized now as well by the BRICS countries. I'm quite sure that they do understand that this is the anti-dollar trade. And and I think a lot of physical is flowing from west to east. This has been happening for years, has been ongoing for years. But now it might get very serious, especially with all these uh, wars ongoing. Yeah, there's so many, you're absolutely correct. There's so many geopolitical issues. And at the same time, uh, you know, the, the Federal Reserve, everyone's watching the Federal Reserve and what they're doing. And you're seeing even central banks buying record amount of precious metals and gold like they've never have before. So do you think, uh, Willem, that there's something that the that the central banks and these countries are seeing? Because if they're moving away from the U.S. dollar and they're going into silver and gold and precious metals, what do they see that we don't? Is they, Do they know that there's an economic collapse like 2008, but way worse coming? Or what do you think? Well, during presentations, I always showed this graph of central bank uh, selling physical gold up to the Lehman uh, crisis, the Lehman Brothers event in 2008. And I always tell the audience there's an era before Lehman and there's an era after uh, Lehman, um, the, the Lehman crash. And, right. and we've seen central banks starting to buy physical gold again from 2009 onwards. But the last two years, we really saw an acceleration of that trade strong accumulation of physical gold, even in European countries like uh, Poland um, uh, or Czechia. And, 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 and that's, that's, that's telling. Uh, so a lot of uh, physical gold buying. And I think the market is about to go in, in, in a reset mode. Uh, don't forget the JP Morgan uh, top guys went to Shanghai to discuss uh, precious metals with their Shanghai uh, gold exchange really? uh, partners. Uh, Mrs. Yellen traveled to China twice this year yeah. to discuss uh, monetary affairs, put it that way. <laughs> and it's it's very telling that the Chinese are not traveling to the US. Uh, the US guys and girls are traveling to China. So who's the master here? Yeah, no, it's it's very telling. Like the shift of power and everything that's happening in the world is, it, it's uh, it's very interesting to watch. And you're seeing now people saying that you know Powell and the Federal Reserve now they're going to keep rates uh, higher for longer. And uh, but how can they do that, Willem, when they have all these central banks like let's say Bank of America, 
and all these major banks, they have billions and billions in unrealized losses on their books due to commercial uh, real estate. Uh, what, what do you think Powell is going to do next? Do you think they're just going to keep rates higher for another year as inflation continues? Or what if well, inflation goes up and it doesn't stop? <laughs> well, they're cornered, you know, yeah. uh, whatever they do, they do something wrong <laughs> um, because they're really cornered. And uh, it's no surprise that that banks like City, Citibank, Citigroup uh, are calling for three thousand dollar gold now because wow. they 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 see what's happening. So it's not the gold bucks and the silver bucks <laughs> making these calls now. It's 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 Wall Street. And uh, I think in twelve to eighteen months, when we look back, we uh, will say, well, a lot has changed. And for us as investors, you know, we're we have a commodity fund, uh, we're commodity um, um, investors. Fifty uh, percent of our investments is precious metals related; the other half is battery metals related. But if, if we look at just the, the fundamentals, they are starting. Um, we, we're seeing um, shortages. To um, um, we see shortages developing in many of the metals markets. Uh, wow. Goldman Sachs has been warning this week for a huge copper deficit this year and next year. Uh, look at uranium, uh, the supply and demand. That's a very that's that those are very strong fundamentals and silver mm -hmm. according to my calculations and my information silver has been in a production deficit since the 1970s wow so yeah so what happens something has to give something has to break and i don't care whether the interest rates are being uh, lowered it it, it 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 it's more about um things the central banks can't control. Right, yeah. And you're seeing You know, how... the central banks, they don't have any silver holdings. So how, how can they supply silver to the market if they no longer can 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 rob the uh well the, the silver ETFs. <laughs> yeah. And what happens when the AI crowd or all these crowds in the market realize that what they're playing with is not real and then they shift to precious metals? Will there even be enough silver in the market? You, yeah. You don't need a shift. I get this uh get this question asked a lot about also crypto, but what right. happens when people start to invest in crypto, you know? Silver is such a small place. I think the whole yearly silver demand for physical is less than 30 billion. Wow. That's not a lot. So it's such a small market. You need uh, a few billionaires can can really uh, uh, break this market down by by buying all the physical. And, and now we ended this era of globalization and right. now we have this new cold war and actors from the east in the BRICS alliance understand that gold but especially silver is the Achilles heel of the dollar system it, it, of course <laughs> it's quite natural silver and gold are in play now yeah and what about the gold uh, the mining sector and the silver mining sector a lot of people saying silver and gold are making the moves now but uh, the mining side is a little bit lagging why is that or is it starting to move well there is no silver mining space there is no silver mining sector you know give me five names of pure silver companies pure silver producers who are listed in the western world yeah, you, you can't, can't because no. even 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 in this like Pan American silver, they 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 do more gold, right? Well, First Majestic is yeah. fifty percent uh, gold. Uh, yeah. Wheat and Precious Metals, which is a royalty streaming company, is is partly gold. So this space is so small. Wow. And we we are only invested in in the top three of largest discoveries uh, IR silver being the best in morocco they came with great news this week it's our largest mm -hmm. position and, and so how do we play this space we just buy the etfs just buy the basket a, a rising tide will lift all, all boats and right. and um don't try to chase one or two of these um well, poor names and always disaster can strike in one of these projects and then they go down uh, 60, 70, 80%. Uh, yeah, that's crazy. That's that's too much of a loss, <laughs> especially on, yeah, uh, on a gamble. It even, it even happened with a big company like First Quantum when they uh, when Panama closed down their huge copper mine. You know, It's always risky to be in individual names, uh, especially right. with the producers. 
especially if they only if they only own one or two mines. So. Yeah. So what what do you see next coming, uh, Willem, in the market? Like, what do you do? You believe that gold will hit three thousand, or it doesn't even matter what gold prices are at this point. You just uh, the most important thing is that the show they can't keep the circus going forever. They can't kick the bucket down the road. Does it even matter what prices are for precious metals? Well, um, I always say I don't know where we go if it's five thousand or four thousand or three thousand or eight thousand. I don't care. You know, yeah. uh, we will be in a, in a bull market. <laughs> Um, we started our fund uh, very unfortunately in 2008. It was the top of the last cycle for commodities. We've been in the bear market actually for almost 15 years. A bull market, new bull market has just started with gold breaking out this four year uh, channel between 1700 and 2100. Um, so we see the start of the third major lag up for gold. The first lag was in the 1970s, the second was after the millennium. Um, and now we see the start of a new third wave and, and gold is following this parabolic move, which started uh, from the 1970s. Look at, at the larger picture. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of room to run. There's no resistance overhead and silver will uh, will um, be able to travel back to 40 and 50. And then people will say, oh, triple top, we need to sell everything. And then silver will break 50 after short correction, probably. Yeah. And then it might run much higher and everybody will be so surprised. So, um, do, you, do you think, uh, Willem, they'll have the power to do what they did in 2008 and 2010? Like to smash it from 50 back down? Yeah. To, do, you, do you think they can do There's it There's always a risk. There's always yeah. a risk. Right. But uh, we, we, we watch uh, the charts. We see them painting the tape. We see the selling... Uh, the waves of selling with futures and the impact of the selling is getting less and less severe. Really? So I, think, I think the buyers out there, the fiscal buyers are enjoying these attacks. Uh, and one day, you know, all manipulation ends in the end. Um, so in the end, uh, it will be upside only. Uh, when When you look at the fundamentals, how can silver be 40% um, lower than the 1980 high. You know, yeah, it doesn't make sense. No. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. So, so the middle coat family has accumulated quite a bit of physical silver, much more than physical gold. And uh, what do you guys do exactly at, uh, you know, the commodity discovery fund? I know you guys look at certain type of batteries. You said 50% batteries and the other 50% is yeah. uh, is metals but, but what do you guys let do let me exactly? explain it shortly uh, it's yeah. called the commodity discovery fund uh, i started it in 2008 because i noticed that when smaller mining companies junior mining companies exploration companies are responsible for a large discovery of silver or gold or copper or uranium they go up a lot in price so i started to specialize on new discoveries worldwide so we track 1,500 exploration companies worldwide. Wow. Uh, they all have their drill programs. And uh, a few dozen of them are, are get lucky every year. And if you do your homework and you follow them all and only invest in the best, uh, so we only invest in the top 100 of best discoveries worldwide, metal agnostic, right. uh, over time you'll do very well. And we've had 83 buyouts uh, since our start. So uh, after you invest and it's a large discovery, there will be a major company taking over the smaller company. And that's that's the exit plan. And what's the like top three things you look at? When you look at a silver exploration uh, company, do you look at, well, yeah, what are the top three things? Management oh, or what is it? No, well, it, it's all about the truce machine. It's all about the drill, <laughs> nah. uh, drilling the core. We want to see core pointing towards a tier one or tier two deposit. Right. And we've been doing this for over 20 years now. I've been doing it personally uh, for over 25 years. And when it's a massive discovery, it shows from the first hole. Really? And, 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 and um, if a system is large, you will find the mineralization everywhere. You don't have to look for it. You'll, uh, <laughs> and it's that's got a how drill. The, yeah, it'll be that's there. That's how... That's how the big old deposits were found. You know, people literally stumbled over it. They fell over it. There was a rock and it was full of <laughs> copper or gold or silver. And of course, the easy stuff has been found. But now we have the uh, geophysical tools to look in through the earth and 
and some big discoveries are still made. It's, it's getting more and more difficult. But look at Aya Silver. They just reported almost 400 million ounces of silver found in Morocco. That's fantastic. <laughs> and that's a great jurisdiction. So that's the best silver discovery out there. They're getting very rare, but because they are very rare, they get very valuable. So I, I like it that it's getting all rare for an investor. That's great news. Yeah, it's very interesting times now in the precious metals market. And Willem, I just wanted to say thank you so much for coming down to Wall Street Silver. Every time you come down to talk about the markets, it's uh, it's such a huge, huge pleasure. Okay, likewise. Talk, Enjoy talk your weekend. You, you yeah. too. Talk to you soon.